Ephesians chapter number 4, please. After 10 years, I asked myself, what more can I say? What else can I tell you that I've not already told you? What more can I share with you? What more do you need to hear? My hair is a lot grayer than when I came. I'm a little bit heavier. Found out yesterday I'm not near as strong as I was. Verse number four, a chapter number four of the book of Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all and through all in y'all. Paul wasn't a Texan. If he did, he'd say, who is above, uh, the Father of all who is above all and through all in y'all. He wouldn't have said you all. That's a Yankee term. We're going to read that thing right. And through all in y'all. But every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. I had a sermon, and now I can't find it. So it looks like I'm going to get to wing it. All I have are outline notes. I don't have my written notes, so this ought to be real interesting. I think it started out with something like this. It was Abraham Lincoln that said, four score and ten years ago, we brought forth upon this continent a nation. And so today, I'm, not, I'm going to drop the four score. And I'm just going to say, ten years ago, Miss Robin and I were dropped in Sweetwater, Texas. <laughs> Having no clue about anything other than the fact that we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had called us to leave what she says was God's country. And let me tell you why she believed Kansas and still today is God's country. It's not because she was born there. It's not because she was raised there. It's not because her parents lived there and only about six blocks from where we were living. But let me tell you why she believes it's God's country. Because we have three daughters and eight grandkids there. And wherever her daughters are, that's God's country. So we left God's country and came to Sweetwater, Texas. And for 10 years, you have loved us. For 10 years, you have encouraged us. For 10 years, you have put up with me. And all that I've gone through, all of my extemporaneous stuff, all of my, wait, wait, let's do this. No, we're going to change this. The choir would come in on Sunday morning. Well, he changed it again. But that was okay. Because God brought me here to teach you flexibility. And I'm not talking about your joints. I know before I came here, this place was so structured on a Sunday morning that if you sneezed out of place, you'd have been asked to leave. <laughs> we have had so much fun. God has done so many amazing things. I have been able to preach through the book of Isaiah, if I remember correctly. It took me four years. I preached through the book of Job, took me three years. I preached through uh, other 
miscellaneous books. I started the book of Judges, and we're not going to get to finish it. I started the book of Revelation, and you're just going to have to read the end of the book because I know we win. Through all that time, God has allowed me to give you his inerrant, infallible word of God. And I thought this morning, what can I tell you that I've not already told you? I could tell you again of God's love and God's mercy and God's grace. I could tell you again of God's salvation that is full and free. I could tell you again of heaven and the amazing reunion that is going to wait for us there. Over the past 10 years, God has allowed me the privilege to minister to over 120 families who have lost loved ones and give them the encouragement and the strength and the comfort to know that Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go, and by the way, He did, I will come again, and by the way, He is, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a blessing He is to know that we have heaven to look forward to. Folks, there's going to be a day when you won't be able to get rid of me. I will be at your mansion and you'll say, I sure wish he'd go home. And I won't. You'll be stuck with me. I could tell you that there's a place coming that we never will say goodbye again. We'll just simply say, I'll see you later. Over the past 10 years, I have encouraged you or tried my best to encourage you to be devoted to God. You have heard me time and time and time again. And I will say it again this morning. You do not serve man you serve God. You follow the Lord. You are devoted to God. So you've got to stay with God no matter what, no matter when, no matter where, because God is your all. And He's in y'all. As Paul said, I've encouraged you to be devoted in prayer. I've encouraged you to pray for me I've encouraged you to pray for my wife. I've encouraged you to pray one for another. I've encouraged you to pray for our missionaries. I've encouraged you to pray for our community. I got tickled the other day. Uh, I was out and and visiting and going to some people that, that I knew that I would miss dearly. And I've still got some more to go to. But I went to one of them. And I just kind of uh, talked to him just a little bit. And this is what one of them said. You're leaving? You can't leave. You're an icon in Sweetwater. I didn't even know what an icon was. I didn't know I conned anybody out of anything. (laughs) I thought it was pretty good. And then, then he said, thank you for being our community pastor. And thank you for loving our town and all the people of Sweetwater. I want you to know I had to get out of there quick. But I've encouraged you, be devoted in your prayer life. I encourage you to be devoted to Scripture. Cling to the Word of God. Jesus said, cast all your care upon me, for I careth for you. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Jesus gives you the promise that he will never leave you, nor forsake you. So be devoted to the scripture. Get in it, read it, believe it, practice it, study it. Make it part of your everyday life. I encourage you to be devoted to service, to serve one another. You know, that's pretty tough. 
when they do what you don't like to go by and help them anyway? To go by and say, I love you even though you was wrong? No, no, no. <laughs> Be devoted to serving one another. Be devoted to winning souls for Christ. Folks, Sweetwater is full of 10,000 people. On any given Sunday, and I did this survey two and a half years ago, on if any given Sunday, if you add all the churches up in Sweetwater, all of the Baptist, all of the Catholic, all of the Lutheran, all of the Methodist, all of the non-denominations, all of the churches that are in Sweetwater, on any given Sunday, less than 3,000 people in Sweetwater go to church. You know what that means? There's 7,000 fish in that sea. Go fishing. Go get them. Be devoted to winning souls. I've encouraged you to be devoted to missions. I, I told you when I came here, the church had been given right out $80,000 a year to missions for four, five, six, eight, nine. It seemed like forever. And I prayed and I said, God, if you will let me in my seventh year as pastor of this church, and yeah, I had already planned on being here that long. Seventh year pastor, if you will let us get to 100,000, I would sure appreciate it. On our third year, we broke the $100,000 mark. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. And you want to know what the good part of this is about it? You've kept doing it every year since then. Thank you for being devoted to missions. And then I want to encourage you to be devoted to one another. Today is a hard day for some, a good day for others. Today some of you will hurt, some of you will be wondering what's going on. Well, let me tell you when it hurts, let me tell you what you do. I've done this for years and I'm not going to quit doing it. When it hurts, the first thing you need to do is leave your burdens at Calvary. There's a song that we used to sing, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. And I want to encourage you today, if your heart is hurting, whether it's hurting because of things in this world, or whether it's hurting because of your family, or whether it's hurting because you don't want to see Miss Robin leave. She's the only reason y'all let me stay, I understand. Bring your burdens to Calvary. Cast all your care on Him because He cares for you. I encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit will strengthen you and He will comfort you and He will guide you into all truths. He will show you what you need to do, when you need to do it, where you need to do it, and how you do it. And I would encourage you to lean on each other. Just call somebody up and say, Man, I sure do miss Miss Robin. Not sure about that preacher, but I really miss Miss Robin. Call each other up and lean on each other. Because, folks, we are family. And then I encourage you to look for the coming of the King because as that song that Matt Redman did during the video, one day we will see face to face. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be. I could tell you again that the sun did come up today, and it's going to be 107, which is why we're over here instead of over there. And if God be willing, it will come up again tomorrow. You will get up, and you will go to work. You will get up if you're retired and sit around the house and listen to your wife fuss about you not going to work. You will get up and find somewhere, something to do and somewhere to go. The sun will come up tomorrow all over this earth. And if it doesn't, it's because Jesus came back and it won't matter. Amen? Amen. I, I can encourage you to the reality, and you've heard me say this for 10 years. I believe in the sun when it does not shine. And I believe in God even when he's silent. There are times that you wonder what's going on. That there are times that you wonder how, when, where, and why. And there are times that you're listening for an answer, but it's just not there. Remember this. Hang on to the promise that you learned in the light when you're in the middle of the darkness. And God will be there. I'll tell you. Close your mouth. Open your nose. And start sniffing. Because if you do, you'll smell the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys.
Folks, God is still here. Miss Robin and I were talking the other day, and I said, Honey, if you could tell them anything, what would it be? And she said, I'd preach out of John chapter 11. I said, You want to? She said, Women can't preach. I said, Well, you do all the time to me. I said, well, what would you tell them? I'd tell them that just because we're gone doesn't mean God's not, God's not here. We're not taking God with us. Amen? Amen? He is just as strong and just as real here today as He was 10 years ago. And let me remind you, this church was going before I came, this church will be going when I leave, and this church will be going when you die. Because it's God's church. I'll tell you again that he promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. I will tell you again and read it out loud with me. You probably don't have to read it, but you know it. Ready? It'll be all right in the end. And if it ain't the end, it ain't the end. I can't even say it, not when it said it. It'll be all right in the end. And if it ain't all right, it ain't the end. But really, what do I want to tell you? I think the first thing that I want to say more than anything else and you know me I love ball. I'm not competitive at all. I love baseball. I love softball. I love Football, except Miss Melanie, wearing an Alabama shirt today. May God rain judgment down upon you. She knows I'm kidding. I put a tack in her chair in the choir. Here's what I'd say. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. That's what I would say for you to say. We've sat on the bench too long. We've sat on the sideline too long. It's time to get in the game. Folks, we are in God's fourth quarter. We are God's team. You're God's quarterback. You could be God's in-guard and tackle. A lot of us played that in football. Coach said this, sit on the end of the bench, guard the water and tackle anybody who tries to get it. But it's time to quit being in garden tackle and it's time to get out on the field and it's time to get involved in the game and it's time for, let, to let God use you in a great and mighty way. Put me in, coach. <laughs> Some people would sit, and I, I've been on the sideline. I was one of what they called the mighty mites. I graduated from high school, went to college, I wrestled at 118 pounds, but I played fullback when I played football because I was just mean. And, and when you're mean, it don't matter. I, I had little dog syndrome. The only problem was my bite was worse than my bark versus the bark being worse than a bite. But I'd sit on the sideline and I was second string fullback to a guy who was 6'2", weighed 230 pounds. I'm 5'6", weigh 118. And I get to tackling. We're practicing. And I'm on the sideline I hollered, Put me in, coach! I want to play! Put me in, coach! And sure enough, he put me in. And he put me in, the, put me in as a cornerback. I'm not a cornerback. I'm mean. Cornerbacks are sissies. No, I didn't say that. But he put me in. And as I was walking on the field, he said, I'm going to let George run your way. I bobered up. Bring him on. I'm ready. Sure enough, he handed that full back off the right tackle. And I filled that gap. And I hit that boy with all 118 pounds in my right shoulder, and I hit the ground, and he scored a touchdown. <laughs> and I grabbed my shoulder and broke my collarbone. 
coach walked over and put it back in place. I was standing on the sideline. Put me in, coach. Before it was, put me in, coach. Now it's, we'll go. Put me in. Folks, it's time to get in the game. It's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's not time to run away. It's not time to say, hey, put John in. He's bigger. Or put George in. He's stronger. Or put Frank in. He's smarter. Hey, you're better looking, so get in the game. There are very few who would say, I want to play, coach. Please put me in. I'm ready. Let me play. Most people want to sit on the side. But here's what I want you to know. And I'm going to go so fast here because time's gone. Understand this. God is the coach and He believes in you. Understand that the coach has confidence in you. And understand that when the coach is calling your name, he knows you can do it. Okay. It's the bottom of the ninth. The bases are loaded. The phone rings in the bullpen. And the guy answers it. The assistant coach answers it. And he says, are you serious? That ain't a very good move, coach. Well, you're the coach, okay. And he turns and says, Chris, he wants you to go pitch. Never pitched a game in my life. But you want me to pitch? I'll do it because the coach believes I can. Because the coach knows I can. Because the coach has confidence in me. And my friend, God believes in you. He has confidence in you. Get in the game. So you're running to the pitcher's mound. And all throughout the stands, you hear it. <gasps> Him? No! We got Nolan Ryan in the bullpen. Why are you bringing him in? I remember in Alabama, I played on a very unique softball team. You won't, won't believe this, but it was in Dadeville, Alabama, and I was the only boy that was white on the whole team. And I played left center field. And the coach, he had seven other guys sitting on the bench. And so you have all these black people out there and me. And you can hear the folks on the bench. What's he doing out there? Well, somebody hit a little blooper. There was going to be a base hit. And I dove. And I caught it just before it hit the ground and came up with it. And the coach turned around and said, that's why he's out there. <laughs> well, folks, you're out here because God has something for you to do. Put me in, coach. Get involved. Don't run. Don't hide. Don't go somewhere else. Get involved here. Put me in, coach. Ephesians 4 is a team effort. Let me show you this. In verses 1 through 3, there's a plea for unity. In verses 4 through 6, there's a pattern for unity. In verses 7 through 13, there's the process of unity. And it's a team effort. When I walk to that pitcher's mound, my infield comes around, and they say, Chris, don't strike him out. Just get us a ground ball. The outfield comes in. Chris, don't strike him out. Just get us a fly ball. We only we need one out. Just give me a ground ball. Give me a fly ball. Get us out of this thing. Why? Because I'm not in it alone. And folks, you're not in it alone. It's a unity that we have. Let me go so fast. Don't just say, put me in. Say, send me out. Why? Because there's a lost and dying world that still needs Jesus. Why? Because we need to go to the regions beyond. Why? Because your neighbor across the street still needs to hear Jesus loved them, Jesus died for them, and Jesus will save them if he will ask them to. So put me in, send me out, because the first letters of the gospel are go. 
Go ye into all the world. Go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Go and carry the light. Folks, we're not saved to sit. We're saved to get. So put me in, coach. Let me get involved. Let me go and carry the light. Let me be part of the team. And as I close, let me do this. This will never be the last time, unless God calls me home, that I preach here. But it may be the last time you get to hear me say this. My friend, Jesus loves you. And Jesus died for you. And Jesus wants to wash away your sins. And Jesus wants to cleanse you and make you whole again. Jesus wants to redeem and ransom you. And Jesus wants to reconcile you to the Father. And Jesus wants to give you a home in heaven. And if you're not saved today, understand that he will save you if you will ask him to. It is as simple as ABC. You acknowledge your need, you believe Christ will save you, and you call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.